For years, myself and others have dreamt of a blaster, a Nerf AEG that was compact, reliable, affordable, had good performance. Introducing the BK2S, and this just might be that blaster. In this video, we're gonna talk about what you get with this blaster. We're gonna talk about its operation, its performance, its pros, its cons, and then give our overall impressions of the BK2S. So let's jump right into today's video. Now, right out the door, we need to lay down a couple things. The BK-1 had poor performance and was basically unreliable. That's a little bit different with this blaster. So let me show you what I'm talking about. First, let's go over what comes in the package. Now, in this package, we have the blaster. We have two magazines that hold 12 darts apiece and 30 darts. As you can see, these darts are a little bit special. They look what we like to call a reverse bamboo. I'm very curious to see what kind of performance we get out of these. This is one of those dart types that if it is good, I would love to buy some of these separately. Since we're talking about the magazines, we might as well point out the elephant in the room. This is a proprietary magazine. It does come with two, which I do appreciate that they didn't just send us one. I think that's a big problem with a lot of blasters that use proprietary magazines. And yes, you can purchase these at added darts. Now, overall, I think the build construction of these magazines are pretty solid. It's a good, durable, high quality plastic. One thing I actually like about this is on the back here, you can hold your thumb on the dart and really hold it on the middle of the dart and then feed in. It just feels a little bit better than a talon because it has this big cutout in the front. You also can't really mix up which way this is going because it's quite clear that where the dart head is poking out the front is the front of the magazine. As you can see with our blaster, we have a couple things that are different. Now it does come with a black muzzle, which you know is a bit scary for what we use these for. So fortunately, Added Darts designed this nice little cover that puts a big safety orange tip on the front. This right here is also a scar barrel provided by Added Darts. Keep in mind, this does not come with the blaster. Later in this video, you will see our testing for accuracy, and it is quite apparent that you do need a scar for this. And that's one of the benefits of running an AEG is that you have a lot of good scar options out there. Let's go through some of the features of the BK2S. Now, as you can see, it has a very aggressive profile. Fortunately, they did color this one in yellow. There, I'm sure there will probably be other color options in the future, but as you can clearly see, the silhouette can be a little bit problematic. This is just a safety disclaimer that, you know, if you grab one of these and you wanna play with these in a public park or a public environment, make sure you properly tag out your blaster with safety orange and be safe. Starting from the back of the blaster, we have a collapsible stock. Now this model has a collapsible stock that you push this little button on the back and you can adjust it to three different positions. Also on the back is the battery compartment axis. On the back of the blaster, we have a QD sling point mount. Moving forward, we have a pistol grip. Now this does look like something you could change out for like an AR type grip. However, the motor is located in here. So this is actually part of the blaster. So it does not come out and you can't swap it out. Mag release is on the side. It looks like it is right-handed only. Not really much flared magwell here. Moving forward, we have the barrel, generous amount of Picatinny on top. On the barrel, we actually have some M-lock mounting points. And then back here is the priming handle, which we will talk about more in the operation segment of this video. And up here on the front of the blaster, you have a window that allows you to see if you have any jams or any clearing issues. And here is the overall weight of this current configuration. The next thing to look at is how to operate this blaster and its performance. Now operating this blaster is a little bit interesting. First, you're gonna remove the stock and the battery cap to install your 3S XT30 LiPo. Now there's plenty of space in here, so you don't need to worry about having a small LiPo or not. Replace the buttstock cap as well as the buttstock if you prefer. Now to actually use the blaster, you'll put the magazine in and make sure it is on safe. Then you'll switch it over to semi-automatic, which is one, and pull the trigger once. Now, if you did it right, it should pull the plunger tube back and you should see the charging handle reset. You are now primed to fire. To switch to a two-round burst instead of a semi-automatic, you hold the trigger for a couple seconds until it beeps, and now you're shooting two-round bursts. And to switch it back, you just repeat the process. And now it's semi-automatic again. Now, to deprime the blaster, you have to pull the trigger while it's in semi-automatic and hold it for about 10 seconds. Not only does this deprime the blaster, but it also allows you to clear jams, which we did manage to have a couple of them. This depriming a method allows you to clear jams without taking part the blaster. Now over to accuracy and performance. Starting off with Worker Gen 3s, we were averaging about 170 FPS with a fairly decent spread. There was a couple outliers, but it was generally pretty consistent, especially for an electronic blaster. 
Now with the included darts, we like to refer to these as reverse bamboos. It was actually getting a few FPS higher on average, but it was a lot more consistent, which was surprising. Still, with either dart type, it seems fairly reliable. Now I ran a couple of different accuracy tests with this blaster, and keep in mind without a scar, the accuracy wasn't really the greatest. Generally when you run a Springer that's over 150 FPS, I would strongly recommend you get some sort of rifling device, whether it's a B-car, SCAR, or P-car. Your results will be tremendously better. Now the BK-2S with a Gavin Fuzzy B-car is substantially better with accuracy. Basic P-cars will also work just fine. We even had good accuracy with used darts. Pros and cons. So I have a lot of pros with this blaster. Let's start with the pros. First off, I absolutely love the small compact nature of this blaster. It delivers a lot of performance for a small form factor. Now, a lot of these Nerf AG type of blasters we've dealt with in the past have always struggled with good battery compartment size. This, however, the BK2S, has a very nice adequate amount of battery storage. Another big pro is the cost. I believe this blaster is at a very reasonable price for what you're getting. And the last pro is the overall build construction of this thing. It feels durable. I don't feel like if I drop it, it's gonna break. I wouldn't recommend dropping it, but I do feel like it's a good, solid, high quality product. Now let's talk about some of the cons. Now the cons are kind of, uh, could be personal preference, a couple of them but uh, I'll talk about the main one. And that is this blaster didn't come with any like real good English instructions. At least I didn't see any, maybe I missed, missed them or something. I really believe there should be a detailed step-by-step -step on how to operate this blaster. Much of what we had to figure out on our own was just kind of trial and error. You know, we did talk to Luke and even he had a couple things that he's like, oh, I didn't know that. So, and that's because there wasn't good supporting documentation for this blaster. I hope that this video helps address some of those issues because we did have quite a bit of heartache. When we first had jams and didn't understand about the clearing process, we decided just to jump in and take, open it up and take a look. So, you know, later we then found out that no, that was a little bit, little extra, we didn't have to do it. Now we do like to open these up and take a look at what goes on inside of blasters because that's what we do here at Flux Labs. We just hope this video will help alleviate any frustrations that people might have with this blaster. Now here's a personal thing, which I, don't know if it's really a big deal. I know I personally have a lot of talons and I would love for this thing to take talons. I have heard rumor of some type of insert, some type of modifications you can do to this to take talons, but you know, a new, a new magazine type is for some people a negative. Another thing that's kind of a negative, and this is just operation, is the constant dry fires. Now we have actually dry fired this thing a lot and I haven't seen any performance degradation or any issues or breaking or anything wrong with the blaster. But I will say throughout the years of being in this hobby and using blasters, the whole dry fire thing just kind of, kind of makes me die inside when I hear things constantly dry firing. So I will say that is something about this one. There is no mechanism or something to prevent you from dry firing. And it seems like when you go to deep prime and jam clearing and all this type of stuff you have to do with this thing, you'll end up dry firing it a few times. Now one con that I have that might not be the same for everyone, and I'm sure some people in the comment section will let me know about it, but I think out of the box, this thing's hitting a little bit too high. It was advertised at shooting at 150. Ours, however, is shooting around 170. So hopefully, you know, with different scars and different barrels, maybe downgrade the spring, I could bring it down to 150. The 150 is a sweet number for us here in our local games because that's the number that we are used to. All in all, my final conclusions of the BK2S is I'm a big fan of it. I hope this is a platform or an ecosystem that we can get behind and we see more development for, possibly maybe some cosmetic kits to help these things look a little bit, you know, less intimidating. And overall, I think it's everything that we have found, it seems to be pretty solid. I wanna give a special thanks to Added Darks for sending in this model for review. I can't wait to play with this more this season and get some more darts through this thing. After getting through the whole operation learning curve, this blaster is actually really good. As always, I wanna thank you for watching today's video. I'm Dr. Flux, be safe and happy foam flinging.